I've been doing some examples of studying eigenvectors and how to find eigenvectors of a matrix. My previous examples in earlier videos have just been 2x2 two two matrices. I want to do a 3x3 three three example that's going to illustrate some, new, some other features of finding the eigenvectors of a matrix and how that can play out. Uh, higher than that, more, you know, 4x4 four four on higher, it becomes such a pain to evaluate, such a pain to do. You should probably just use your computer to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, but this one will illustrate a bit more in practice as we go. So here's my matrix, minus 3, 5, minus 2, 1, 1, minus 2, 0, 0, minus 4, and I want to find its eigenvalues, and they associate eigenvectors. So to do that, what do I do? Well, my usual thing, I'm going to take find the matrix m minus lambda i, uh, with lambda being a symbolic constant, find the determinant of that and set it equal to zero. Here, what I've got to do, I've got to do m minus lambda i, just subtract lambda from all the elements down the diagonal. So determinant is a vertical bar, so minus three minus lambda, five minus two, then one, one minus lambda, minus two, zero, zero, minus four, there it is. I want to set that equal to zero. That's my that's my plan. Now to evaluate this, uh, to evaluate this, I need to take the determinant of this matrix. And there are lots of ways of taking the determinant. I'm going to use the my favorite way of three by three determinants, uh, favorite way of finding three by three determinants, which is to multiply it diagonally down, sort of wrapping around and putting these things together. So uh, let me show you what this is. This is when I multiply down the main diagonal, I get minus 3 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda. Oh, whoops, this was supposed to be minus 4 minus lambda, wasn't it? Minus 4 minus lambda, yeah. Uh, minus 4 minus lambda. So I get that multiplying down the main diagonal, plus, well, 5 times minus 2 times, going down this diagonal, 0, plus negative 2 times... 1 times 0. That's those three forward diagonals wrapping around the edges. And then backward diagonals, I'll go down this way, uh, minus, minus 2 times 1 minus lambda times 0, minus, next one is here, um, minus 2, 0, minus 3 minus lambda, so minus, minus 2 times 0 times whatever because it's a zero in there, minus, um, I got that one, I got that one, this one, um, minus four minus lambda times five times one. That's my determinant, and you could work that out yourself. There are lots of ways of doing it, but this is the way I calculate the determinant. And the nice thing is, looking at this, I've got a lot of terms that are zero. There's a zero multiplying that term, zero here, zero here, zero here. It looks like I actually only have two non-zero terms in all this. And uh, the other interesting thing is they both have this minus four minus lambda thing going on. So this a whole thing equals zero. Minus four minus lambda. Let me collect those like terms. Let me, let me click this up, simplify a little bit, and see where it takes me. So um, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm going to factor out the minus four minus lambda that's in both of those terms. Minus four minus lambda. I'm going to make that look better in a minute, but just to keep it straight. And then this term is that times this first term here. I'll just multiply it out. Uh, I get minus 3 uh, plus 3 lambda minus lambda gives me plus 2 lambda. And then plus lambda squared. And then down here, minus 5. Okay, so let me straighten this all out and make it look a bit more reasonable now that I've got all the terms up here. This still equals zero, so okay, I'm going to factor out a minus sign out front. In fact, I'll multiply both sides by minus one just so I get this to be lambda plus four. So I've got lambda plus four uh, minus this, minus that, okay. Uh, lambda plus four times lambda squared plus two lambda minus 8 equals 0. And hey, that's another thing that I can factor. I, I can factor that. I've got, I've got to have two things that multiply to give minus 8, that add to give plus 2. That seems to be lambda plus 4 times um, lambda minus 2 times lambda plus 4 equals 0. 
uh, hey, this is actually a double root. So I guess I could write this as lambda plus 4 squared times lambda minus 2 equals 0. In other words, lambda equals 2 and negative 4 are my two solutions. And the negative 4 is a double eigenvalue. It's got, it comes from two terms in the characteristic polynomial of the matrix. So I've got those two terms. So okay, I've got these. What do I do to find the eigenvectors? I, go, I do my usual procedure. I'm going to use this equation, m minus lambda i for each individual lambda, times v equals 0. I'll solve for v. So what do I do? Uh, let me do the first one, lambda equals 2. For that case, and I, I'm just going to write this down in terms of a general vector. So my my uh, negative 3 minus 2 gives me minus 5, 5, minus 2, then 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, minus 2, and 0, 0, and minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6, uh, that, that matrix, times, I'll just say, ABC, That's, those are the components of my vector, ABC, uh, that has to equal 0. And so what do I find? Well, the bottom equation immediately tells me that minus 6c equals 0, or in other words, c equals 0. Uh, so I already know that for this lambda equals 2 eigenvalue, the third component of the vector, of the eigenvector, has to be 0. For the others, I can look immediately, uh, these two are, are repetitive, they mean that they have the same properties once you say c equals 0, they're, uh, they're redundant. And I can immediately see that a, looking at the middle, middle line, for example, since that has easier numbers, a minus b minus 2c, which is 0, equals 0. So in other words, a equals b. And so my general vector, my lambda equals 2 eigenvector, is a, a. Or a specific example, 1, 1 is probably what I would write down for this. Or I could normalize it, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over... Not one one. I'm leaving out a, leaving out the zero at the bottom. Goodness, don't leave out the third component of your vector. Uh, a a zero. The zero is important. One one zero. Uh, so yeah, th this is my uh, th this is my eigenvector. The only eigenvector for lambda equals two. One one zero or multiples of that. Great. What about the lambda equals minus four? How does that play out? Let me change colors here just to change the look a little. Um, changing colors, uh, what's, what's going to work? So for lambda equals minus 4, uh, I've got my matrix. I'm going to do the same thing. Minus 3 minus minus 4 is plus 1. So plus 1, 5, minus 2, and 1. 1 minus minus 4 is 5 minus 2. We were expecting a redundant system, so we've got it. And my third one, 0, 0, Minus 4 minus minus 4 is 0 times ABC equals 0. So this is actually kind of an interesting thing. Looking at this, I have the same equation. I, I just have one equation relating these three unknowns. So that's going to tell me over here I wound up having two equations, minus 6 equals 0 and a minus b minus 2c equals 0, relating three unknowns. So I had one free choice left, which I called a. Uh, I left it there. Here I only have one independent equation relating these three unknowns, so I'm going to have two free choices. That's kind of cool. So two free choices means that, uh, what do I have? I've got, all I know is that a plus 5b minus 2c equals 0, and any choices that I make within that are going to be fine. Uh, I could do this in a lot of ways, but, uh, but I think, honestly, uh, rather than doing one-fifth and one-half, that sort of thing, I'm just going to do this the simplest way and say that my a, then, has to be equal to minus 5b plus 2c. So my vectors, my lambda equals minus 4 eigenvectors, are any vector of the form minus 5b plus plus 2c, b, c, any vector of that form is going to be an eigenvector of this matrix. I guess I haven't checked any of these, have I? I should have checked the first one. Um, uh, but I, you know, any vector of this form, I claim, is going to be an eigenvector of this matrix. So just for example, if I choose b equals 1 and c equals 0, I would get 
let's see, minus 5 times 1 plus 0, minus 5, 1, 0. If I chose b equals 0 and c equals 1, I would find that 0, uh, 2, 0, 1. Those are both going to be ve vectors of this form. But there's so many of them. I think uh, when I did a, a first video talking about eigenvectors and how they work, I think that I, uh, I, I think that I gave another example. I think I said minus 1, 1, 2. Does that work? If I have 1 and 2 as these two, then I have 1b and 2 for c. So that would be minus 5 plus 2 times 2 is minus 1. Yeah, that, that works as well. So I've got a whole set of these parameterized by b and c, by these two things. I can find all sorts of eigenvectors that will work, uh, as many as I want, really. And uh, we've seen this before. We've talked about, or at least we've talked about this before, that if you have repeated eigenvalues, one option is that you only have one eigenvector to go with it, and doesn't you know you're just stuck with the matrix only without without uh, all the eigenvectors that it could have, with less than an n by n matrix with less than n eigenvectors, you can have that. Or in this case, you can have two independent eigenvectors and two independent things here, and you could just choose two of them. Any two that are linearly independent turns out will span a space. These are two these are two different vectors or these are two, and any two of these will span some plane in the in three-dimensional space, and any vector in that plane is going to be an eigenvector. Any linear combination of two of these will be in the same, some tilted weird plane or something in three-dimensional space, and it'll be an eigenvector of our matrix. Let's just double check that, just to see how it works. Um, if I do minus three, 5 minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, 0, 0 minus 4 times uh, this one, minus 5, 1, 0. That's going to give me, okay, that's 15 plus 5 is 20. So it's going to give me 20. And here I'm going to get minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4. And here I've got 0. And this is exactly minus 4 times minus 5, 1, 0. So that works. Yay! This one was, in fact, an eigenvector with eigenvalue minus 4. So we've got this whole collection of possible eigenvectors. And as long as we pick two that are linearly independent, that will produce a basis of that, of that tilted plane, of that space of options. So this is what can happen if you have repeated eigenvalues for a matrix, if you find more than one lambda. Sometimes you'll get an equation where you just only have one solution and one one vector solution, and that's it. You're just stuck with it. That's your only eigenvector. Other times you'll get something where you really do have uh, this sort of freedom to choose, a full plane's worth, two degrees of freedom worth of of eigenvectors. Uh, but either way, your our procedure here will immediately tell you which way that should go, and it's kind of nice when that happens that, that it will tell you what to do. So. That's how you can find the eigenvectors of a 3 by 3 matrix and a little bit about interpreting them. And I hope that this has been enough to get you up to speed on the math of it so that now you can go and apply this to all the really cool places in physics where eigenvectors show up.